Melanie is with me now, and I'm also joined by the author, Dr. Joanna Williams, who's the education editor at Spiked Online. Welcome to both of you. Um, Joanna, first of all, just watching that video briefly there and seeing what some women go through every day, um, particularly the more menacing moments, as we saw there just at the end, is that misogynist behaviour, in your opinion? No. Um, I think that video um, did the rounds on YouTube and went viral on social media, I think it was last year, but it's been very thoroughly debunked by a number of people who suggest that, well, question the areas of New York, why were certain areas targeted? Um, if you walk around with a camera, for, with a camera, making eye contact with people, looking for a particular response, then you are likely to find it. I think the problem is nowadays we throw around statistics like 85% of women have experienced sexual harassment. But when sexual harassment is defined so broadly as to include winking and whistling, the real surprise is why why so few women have experienced sexual harassment. If winking and whistling are sexual harassment, my surprise is that it's not 100% of women. But I don't think winking and whistling are sexual harassment. And I don't think this is something that really needs police time and attention to right. spend on it. Melanie, what do you say first of all to Joanna articulating this idea that it's just too broad a spectrum to include some of the things that she said, like winking? Well, I tried to... Um not trivialise this as just being a, a, a winking or a wolf whistling issue and actually it's much broader and it is about the continuous backdrop of harassment that women experience every single day and it's you know it's, it's going from very young girls are in their school uniforms right through the spectrum uh, you know up, up to, to adult women uh, and receiving unwanted attention that is uh, intimidating, that is off-putting and that puts us socially as a, at a disadvantage and we are targeted because of our sex and I think that that is when, uh, and we've seen some success actually around the country, Nottinghamshire Police uh, do define uh, misogyny as a hate crime and it has encouraged more women to come forward and report issues and it's led to convictions of people who've been identified through that process who've then gone on to commit some more serious crimes I mean, the against thi women. The thing is, Joanna, isn't this now in 2018 an opportunity to set the reset button, to actually get the law to keep up with what we now deem acceptable standards of behaviour by men towards women? I think we are pressing the reset button, but to me we're pressing it in a way which is entirely detrimental to women because to me this, this proposed law is incredibly insulting to women. It suggests women are so fragile and vulnerable that they can't cope with walking down the street. But why should they have to put up with endless wolf whistling well, or catcalling or you know people <laughs> shouting at you in the street, men saying, oi darling? Because a lot of this is about human interaction and women can cope with human interaction. Some women actually, I mean, bizarre though it may seem to people sitting here, some women don't find it unwanted. Some women do actually enjoy engaging with people and have no problem with it whatsoever. The, the danger is when we start talking about people, children in school uniform, girls in school uniform, we reduce all adult women to that status. I don't want police protecting me on the street from wolf whistles and cat calls. I'm more than capable of being able to protect myself. Right. This well, is incredibly illiberal. Right. It, in that sense, do we really need legislation to, to, to deal with this? Because there, there are laws already in place. We do have hate crime laws. We do have laws against harassment. So we are talking about what one might describe, and Joanna has said, as the more trivial end of what is harassment. And I, I, I completely understand, uh, you know, the, the side of the argument that Joanna is, um, is putting across. However, um, it is something that happens on such a ritualistic, regular basis. And uh, when it comes to the other hate crimes uh, that we already have, uh, very often these can be uh, kind of bisectional issues. So it will be uh, people are being targeted because they are a Muslim woman or because they are a black woman. And, you know, actually to enforce it and make sure that it's properly dealt with. The police have said that they do not uh, object to it. It doesn't take up any uh, additional resources from elsewhere, that they are very happy to incorporate it into their I think, work that they are already doing to better protect women. I think you have to have led a very, very privileged life to think that this is the best use of police time. You've clearly never been mugged or burgled or have well, been held bit, at that's knife very, point that's to very assume to that. Say that. And I'm not assuming that at well, all. And, and this is the problem, I suppose, with the, uh, with the line of the debate that, that has you know, largely been taken 
taken out of context. But this is about uh, in, in, uh, fostering a real change in our culture. And there's been so, uh, the, the chair of the, uh, the uh, sex discrimination review that the Force Society undertook said that the laws do set our cultural norms and our behaviours. But and this is that the point? But the, exactly, it is the point, and it's an incredibly illiberal change, which is about policing personal behaviour, monitoring interactions I between I people. Really don't I don't want to live in think a world. That is well, I don't think. Behavior. I don't think it's just men. I think actually lots of women would object to this law too. Well, do, would you object to a law like this, Miata? Well, so it's clearly bad behaviour, and I disagree. In so far, it's you know it's sexist and it shouldn't be tolerated. Um, and there's a spectrum um, and I think you do have to be proportionate and you know some of the things that we see you know men taking pictures of women up their skirt and stuff mm. absolutely should be banned uh, cat calling wolf whistling I think we do need within the bounds of the existing law actually to treat them firmly and more strongly than we are at the moment but I think there's a kind of cultural norm I think if you say it's okay people will continue doing it but actually if more people are saying this is absolutely disgraceful it is unacceptable you cannot behave in that way that in itself starts to shift the cultural norm but what does it say as Joanna said earlier that actually you're going to in some way change interaction between men and women um, that that is how relationships not with wolf whistling cat calling but if you interfere at a sort of legal level to that extent it will make it difficult for normal yeah, human relations it, to continue it, it really does doesn't though, does it? I mean, to, to treat somebody uh, entirely with dignity and respect in uh, in a way that you would treat uh, for a man to treat another man to do that to to a woman, I don't think it, it redefines the, our relationships at all. And the idea that men are completely unable to cope with doing it at that level is insulting to them. The problem is Very everybody briefly. has a different idea of what dignity and respect mean. I mean, I speak to women who will say to me in private, "I wouldn't want this to be known publicly." But if someone wolf whistles at me, it puts a spring in my step and a smile on my face. But and should that be the reason and the basis for actually not changing a law where more women may feel into?